So good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. Good evening to once again, we have gathered on a Wednesday dealing with marriage and relationship issues. And particularly for today, we have a topic that is something that touches each and every one of us. And that is conflict, conflict. All of us in one way or the other are victims or we are perpetrators of conflict in our lives. So as I welcome each and every one of us from our busy day, I want us to put ourselves in a mood of prayer so that we can pray and ask the Lord, God of peace, to give us skills and tools for conflict resolution. My dear brothers and sisters, let us pray. I know as you are home, you may pray with me this prayer. Heavenly Father, who we love, I lift your name over all the earth. Father, lately I have found myself in a place that I do not want to be in. Anger hatred and bitterness is causing me to lash out at people around me and especially at my dear loved ones. I am on edge at every point. The slightest gesture upset me. I cannot continue on like this, oh Father. Please hear my cry. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe each and every one of us can associate with this prayer that many times we find ourselves in places or situations where we would not like to be. And oftentimes, not just once, but often, hatred and bitterness is causing us to speak or to act in ways that are not godly. So today we pray that learning something from today's session, all of us can prepare ourselves for a better life. Now we look at conflict. Conflict. What is conflict? When you hear that, whenever we hear that the story or imagine people in love, people involved in divorce, we ask ourselves, what are the thoughts that come to our mind? How do you feel? People that you have known so closely. Sometimes I have even witnessed certain marriages, either by the traditional marriage, or in court, or even in church. And then after some time, you see that this marriage is falling apart. It begins slowly, and then all of a sudden you hear that the two are not no more together. People who started relationships either as courtship, and there was so much hope and potential, all of a sudden it just dies out like that. How do you feel? What are the thoughts that comes to your mind? Does it ever cross your mind that it can happen to you? Or do you say to yourself that as for us, we love ourselves so much that it cannot happen to us? If we do not learn, if we do not pray, if we do not allow ourselves, if we do not allow ourselves to enter and be able to know the wisdom of God, a lot of us will be in trouble. So we go on. What is conflict? What is conflict in general?
sorry, my dear brothers, I am a li little distracted because information reaching me is that certain people are, lots and lots of people are not able to come on. I think we need to update our Zoom. I continue. What is conflict? It is the difference in opinion that disturbs your emotional balance, triggering especially anger and fear and leading to negative acting out and stress. What do I mean? You cast in Tawantawa and I say, you cast a conflict and no any day. And only say, say, why dream any margini in Shia and Untino? Na ama senior abutoya ewe ye muno aya de nini na ebe se na fedi e bufuo ni osro ebe ba ye mu na enundi no ye ni ye ni ye kasa eni ni ye ye no afi ye beka ni se se binyansa nanka ewe muno ni na nanka aya de ase conflict is the difference in the opinion the difference in the opinion that disturbs your emotional balance. Otherwise, we are at peace. Usually we are at peace, but when there is difference in opinions, then you begin to do what? You begin to feel that there is something wrong. And then your emotions begin to work. And then your blood begins to pump more and more blood. This will trigger certain emotional responses such as anger and fear especially and when these come up the natural thing is that you begin to solve and balance these things you begin to act out negatively or out of stress so you begin to sweat you begin to worry you begin to talk with a harsh voice you begin not to have patience and things like that this is as a result of conflict that you and i do not take our time to look at and address well so conflict is such that it arises as the difference in opinion. So we go. There is nothing like a conflict-free marriage or relationship. In fact, Conflict does not have to destroy your marriage. It can make it good. Many people think that when there is conflict, it means that that is the end. No. A, people who are mature are able to understand that whenever there is conflict, they use the conflict to develop. So when there is a difference in opinion, and that difference in opinion results in an emotional balance, then when you try to come back to emotional stability, then you begin to have mutual relationship with the person that otherwise you had an emotional destabilization. So conflict does not always have to be bad. It can also be good. It can be the way of refining your relationship. We have to rather pray for the grace to learn and master how to fight or flee according to the plan of God. Now, when there are difference in opinion, sometimes you have to fight for your right. Sometimes you have to flee. Sometimes you fight and you realize that you have made a mistake. Sometimes you flee and you realize that you should have stayed. But in all this, you need to learn and master, master the art of conflict resolution. And that is why we are trying to spend the next few days in this area of relationship and marriage. So there are certain times that somebody says something. You have to ask yourself, is it necessary for me to talk? Is it necessary for me to fight back? There are some of us. We, have no, we, are, we don't know how to control our emotions. At the slightest provocation, you also respond. That is already a sign to you that you are emotionally immature. If at any trigger you get worked up, for example, you are driving and somebody cuts across your you, and then immediately you flare up, 
you forget whoever you are sitting in the car and you begin to insult the person, you know very well that, hey, brother, hey, sister, you have a problem. That problem is called immaturity of not being able to handle your emotions. We need to be able to handle our emotions. It's not every fight that you have to fight. Sometimes you have to flee. Sometimes you have to work. It's not every time that you have to flee. Sometimes to, you have to fight. And learning and mastering this is an art. Second Timothy chapter, five, chapter 2 verse 5, St. Paul says that similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. This means that we are to fight and we are to flee. But when it is time for fighting and you are fleeing, it is wrong. Or when it is time for fleeing and you are fighting, it is wrong. So you need to be able to know when to fight and when to flee. Again, you need to be able to know that competing, expressing your opinion, doesn't mean that you have to do it anyhow. There are some of us who express our opinions irrespective of who is there and in any manner at all. You need to be considerate. You need to know that all, um, all, you, there, 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 there's no one way of killing the cat. So you cannot always say that, as for me, if you touch me, I will give it to you. That is a bad principle of life. It, does, it, does, it means that you are so arrogant and so full of yourself that you think that the way you do it is the best. That is arrogance. Sorry, that is pride. You need to be able to be careful you, how to handle it. So there is a time for fight and there is a time for flee. Now what is necessary is that you and I will have to ask ourselves, in marital conflict, do we take our time to know how to compete according to the rules? What about if it is an office relationship? What about if it is just mere friendship? What about if it is in the society? What about if whatever it is, you need to understand that conflict is part of life. But when there is conflict, you need to express, you need to approach the conflict in a manner that is befitting of you. So your level of the choice of your conflict skills tells how mature you are or how mature you want to be. Therefore, we have to be careful. Marital conflicts. Marital conflicts. Marital conflicts are repetitive and costly because there is a high interdependence between spouses such that any little disagreement affects the stability of the marriage. It was some minute woman no ever to your book. Me a shady ye a son said, Ye a year, Jumana, cock will see a womb. So there is a need for all of us to be able to be interested in marital conflict and its resolution. Do not say that, as for me, 
I do not cause my wife a problem. You are the problem. If you say that, as for me, I don't cause my husband a problem, then you are a problem. Wait for your husband to say it. Wait for your wife to say it. But don't always be saying, me there any problem. As for me, I don't have a problem. It is she. It is her. You are a big problem. You need counseling. Because just by saying that, you are causing difference in opinion. What about if your partner says that is not the case? Then there is a difference in opinion. And that difference in opinion will naturally cause what? An emotional destabilization. And that emotional destabilization will cause what is called what? Fear and anger. And when there is fear and anger, all too soon, you see that your language will change. Your body language will change. And then it will lead to conflict. It can be minor conflict, can be a medium conflict, or major, major conflict. Marital conflict is always repetitive. But again, marital conflict is not just about you winning but about what honors and pleases the law. My dear brethren, you see, whenever there is conflict in any Christian's, Christian lives, uh, uh, in the life of a Christian, you need to understand that resolving conflict is not merely about who has won, who is right, or who is wrong. No, it is about honoring God such that the two of us are able to live and we honor God. Because God is three, yet he is one. They are three, they are, they are three. Jesus is full God. The Spirit is full God. The Father is full God. All of them are full God, but they learn to cooperate. Even they cooperate. What about us? But as for us, we say, no, I am. So you need to understand that marriage and conflict needs to be we need to deal with it according to the will or that's in a way that will please the lord so don't just do it anyhow do it in a godly manner conflict resolution the first step in a conflict resolution is to accept that there is a conflict this is what i have been trying to say Say <laughs> Many people deny that there is a conflict and stress just because there is no blood on the street. So many, many marriages, many, many relationships are full of, full of conflict and stress, but they are not ready to talk about it. Men are hiding away. Women are hiding away. There is always stress and there is conflict, but we are not ready to talk about it. Why is it so? First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, we are told, Jesus came so that those who live will no longer live for themselves. But this is not what we see in marriages. And this is what I call the sin of marriage today, where everybody lives for himself. As for me, we say, Mimi dear. That kind of language must dissolve, must be abandoned, must be, must be eliminated in our language. Me dear, as for me, why do we do that? You did not marry yourself. You married, it's a, it is a two-way. You did not come to the society. You did not come to the church. There are so many people who come and, and make themselves holy, holy, holier than anybody. And yet such people, they cannot tolerate anybody. They are the ones who pray sanctimoniously in the corner, so holy, so to speak. But they can't tolerate anybody. When a Christian, a true Christian, cannot live with somebody, there is something wrong with you. Christianity is about unity. 
So why is it that you can't live with somebody? Or is it people who can't live with you? You say that people have problem. What about you? The problem is soon, as soon, like that. So this is a sin of marriage or the sin of relationship where we live for ourselves, where we say that this is how I want it. This is how it must be. No. Jesus says that Jesus came so that those who live will no longer live for themselves. Who do you live for? That which you are angry about, is it just because of about you or it's about the, for the good of both of you? So we go on. Conflict, therefore, is real. Conflict, therefore, is real. See what James chapter 4, verse 1 to 3 tells us. And I read. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Day and a day in Tokwa and in Tawantawa, a sea away. Don't they come from your desire that battle within you in free ya yemu ya ye pessim kumunya nyema ye pessi ye nyenti dia pessa would di ukunua now ye resuntino. You desire, but you do not have. So you kill or you have, ang you have anger. Just because you want something, you don't get it. So you are angry. You are angry with your priest. You are angry with your congregation. You want it your own way. So you are angry. You said it, they didn't do it. So you are angry. Oh, why? You are angry with your wife. You are angry with your child. You are angry with your husband. You are angry with the government. You are angry with the populace. You want things just in your own way. Oh, this is sad. We are at war. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. To covet is to get everything for yourself. Grabbing, you you everything. Rich people are cheating the poor people. Poor people are cheating themselves. What is happening to our world? You do not have because you do not ask. When we ask, we ask human beings, but we do not ask God. And even when we ask God, we ask in the right way. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. This is the reason for conflict. Conflict is real. Many of us are in conflict, but because of our selfish desires, because of our selfish desires. When marriage fails, often whose fault is it? Is it the man or is it the woman? Choose one. I know you have chosen. That's a very good one. The answer is, it is no one's fault, but everyone's responsibility. Both, both of you contribute to the marriage as well as distract from it. You know, Adam, Adam, Adam. Why, Adam, have you eaten the fruit? It is the woman. It is not his fault. When will men accept their fault? Woman, why is it that this happened? It is not me, it is the devil. Women follow the same thing. They will never accept their fault. So whose fault is it? It is not about asking whose fault. It is about asking, how do we solve it? All of us, it is our responsibility. Maybe it is not in equal percentage. Maybe it is not in equal percentage. 
And in the Ekase Yeni Nara, Yabaya, Yabaji, and Fums Watum. There are so many of us who say that, Father, me, I didn't do anything. I have not done anything. If there is a problem, then she is the problem. You are a big problem if you do not know. If you speak like that, you always say her problem, you must always say her problem is my problem. Now we hear a problem. Ruth chapter, Ruth chapter 1 verse 16, where Ruth says to Naomi, her in-law says that, your God shall be my God. Your people shall be my people. But that is not what happened. You ask a woman who has been married in a church, and you ask her, where do you come from? She will, she will tell you the hometown of her husband, of her mother and father. But she has forgotten that a man shall live father and mother. So your hometown now is where both of you come from. Yes, on the paper, yes, you may write this hometown. When you ask, who is your mother? Your mother-in-law has come. Your, your, whose mother-in-law? It is your mother. It is all about our mother. If we think and behave like that, all of us, there will be less conflict in our relationship. That is what is killing many of us. It is her problem. It is his problem. Not our problem. How many times have you heard a husband and a wife fighting and somebody goes in to settle and the wife or the husband is able to say that father as for this problem my fault actually is that i didn't do this and the other person will speak like that how many times have you seen that before and yet we call ourselves christians is it that we don't know our fault or is it that we just don't want to accept these are the sources of conflict when people refuse, or they, 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 you know, Shakespeare says that there is no one so deaf as he who refuses to hear. And there is no one so blind as he who refuses to see. So if you tell yourself that you don't have a problem, then when, who can make you have a problem? If you tell yourself that this problem, then you are not ready for the responsibility. Then why are you talking? Allow the problem to just eat you up like that. That's not the reason. That's not why we are there. So now I would want to speak a little bit about what are the three basic mistakes of men in marriage that usually result in conflict. Three basic mistakes in, uh, that men make that usually result in conflict. I am not saying that these are the only mistakes of men. I'm saying they are basic. There are things that I just want you to think about and reflect on them. Number one, number one is that men fail to tell the truth. Men have the tendency to withhold or sugarcoat information they think the other may not be able to handle the way they want it. Dishonesty is betrayal of trust, lack of respect. So men, in order that there will be less conflict, we must learn, all men must learn to tell the truth. It is a tendency in the man to always run away. Men have the tendency to withhold and sugarcoat information and make it so light. They think that others may not be able to handle it. This is the first problem that brings a lot of conflict in relationship. Number two, men hide hiding their feelings, experiences of inadequacies and fear. A lot of time, a man, instead of admitting that I, 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 I am afraid, I don't know what it is, I don't know how to handle it, then you hide your feelings and let it look like you are in control. Meanwhile, you are not in control. So you begin to talk and act tough. You talk rough and loud. You avoid difficulties, blame others, and blame and project, and make, they make you look wrong. This is an Adamic tendency. I did not do it. It is you. You did it. Men, if you are listening to me, this is one of the reasons, or this is one of the three basic reasons 
why there is a lot of conflict in our relationship. The third one is that not having a solid spiritual foundation while attempting to rely on his physical and human self, ego. Most men do not try to build a solid spiritual foundation. Men are leaders in church. Men are doing so many things, but their spiritual foundation is usually very light. And usually they think they rely on their physical strength and the human self. So because of that, you see that their faith is not so deep rooted. And often the consequence is that it brings up, it brings what? Conflict. Let me try and mention three basic mistakes that women also do in marriage that causes a lot of times conflict. That brings about conflict. Number one, women don't ask and seek what they want, what they really want. She wants this. Most of us women, instead of I, I am putting myself as a woman, most of us women, instead of us asking what we, we are supposed to say, you beat about the bush so that the real issue is lying there. Then they are full of bitterness, leading to bitterness and unfulfilled life. The thing that you wanted to say, instead of saying it well, you allow your bitterness to cloud your speech so that your, 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 your speech is full of anger. The, how can the man hear you? So they begin to belittle their men and sooner or later, the marriage dies out. A woman must know and be able to express how and what she wants in clear manner without adding emotions to it, without crying, without making it look so, so many colors. If you do that, you lose the man and the man does not get what you are saying and this will result in conflict. Two, gossip about your partner to other people. Women usually gossip they talk to other people they talk to other people about their spouses it destroys sacred energy it is necessary to have just one or two persons that you talk about your challenges but not your partner's life these are the things or areas that you need these are the partner's life these are things that you need to pray about they most and the problem that women is that when you have a problem in the relationship, when you have a problem in your life, go on your knees. Women have the power to intercede, and yet they will not. They will use their mouth to gossip and do any other thing except to pray. If you watch the movie War Room, I think it summarizes everything. Women, do you have a prayer room? Do you have a war room in your house? When it gets tough, you must tend to prayer. You have to be convinced that the solution to your marriage lies within your marriage, but not outside of it. Every gossip is gossip. Please, every gossip is gossip. So be careful of that. The next one is that Women fail to see their partner for what they are or for who they are. They want their men to be what they want them to be. So they try or want to drive and murder them. Eve tendency. Eve has a problem. She has gone to eat the, the, the fruit. Why does she go and drive? Does she go to drive Adam to by all means eat some? Most women drive men to do certain things. And afterwards, the man will hate you almost for life. You are the one, you find a woman pushing the man. If you love me, then marry me. If you love me, then do this. If you do, you see? <clears throat> Most women often fail to see their partner for what they are and for who they are. 
and they want more than that. So you find a woman, eh? Everybody is doing it, but you are not doing it. And you drive the man crazy to go and do something. And when the problem comes, mm, you say, I am sorry. This is the basic problem that causes conflict in our lives. Three basic things that I have discussed. I'd like to leave it here. I, I wanted to go on to some other things, but I think I would want to leave it here for the discussion because we would have looked next week at the conflict cycle, conflict cycle, and there are other things that we would like to look at. But I'd like to let it be here. We'd like to end here so that in case there are questions, I'd be able to take them so that. My dear brethren, three basic things that men do and three basic things that women do. I am projecting the third one for men so that we will look at it before I will open the lines for questions and for suggestions to be able to help ourselves. There are three basic. This is what the men have opened for the men now. And here we come to the women. Shall I now open the lines? I shall, anybody with a question, with the things that we have done, conflict, conflict, how can we help ourselves to lessen conflict or to be able to, to use the conflict for a positive end? Now you may ask your question by sending it through the chat button or you may you may just raise your hand and somebody will call you you uh, will just we'll just unmute you right now if you want to just talk you can just unmute yourself and then you will it will you are good to go there you can just unmute yourself and then you may Okay. Somebody Hi. is asking. Is there anybody there? Okay. Somebody is asking. If somebody says that, thank you, Father. Father, you said it all. Another person says that, thanks, Father, for this. Father, please, don't you think it is men's duty to know and understand what women want Yes, it is. It is their duty, as well as it is the duty of the women to also know what the men want, what the men also need. So it is a three, it is a two-way thing. It is not just one way. So you see that um, in, in dealing with it, men, men hide their experiences. They hide their they hide their feelings and they talk tough. Instead of them, if they, instead of them admitting that they don't know the woman, they just bulldoze themselves. On the, I know a woman. Every woman is like this. Every woman is like that. When a man talks like that, you know he doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything. When a woman too also talks like that, you know that they, they don't they don't know anything. Yes. Is there somebody on the line? There's yes, somebody on the line. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. Me, uh, Peter, Mr. Peter. Yeah, Gaku. Peter Gaku. Yes, From please. Tessie. Thank you, please. Yeah, uh, Father, I wanted to ask if you have married, your wife keep on demanding in a certain situation that she know already that you don't have and then she continue demanding in that situation, what will you do? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Peter Gapo. 
That's very good. Now, first of all, you need to ask, why is she repeating it? Is she being just unreasonable? It is possible that you, you know what she, you can do something about it. We also said that women all sometimes expect too much of their husbands and they drive them into doing certain things. Eve did it and destroyed Adam. And so many women also do that and destroy their husbands. Sorry, please. I think I was cut off network problems, but I am back. A lot of the times, women just drive their men crazy. And that is why we are going to be looking at some of these things. So that we, when we get, you saw that I was just about to project the conflict cycle that was there, which we would have dealt with. So when we come into the next one, with the next week, we will look at the conflict cycle and we will be able to look at the level of conflict so that you begin to see that when you are asking and it is getting serious, you need to know when it's time for reconciliation and stop it. So don't, don't let it be that you are a woman or you are a man. You push and push and push your partner. And if you continue doing that, what will happen is that you will let your partner do something that he or she does not want. After all, the person is not a child. So why are you forcing him or her to do that? At the end of the day, I am, what I'm trying to drive out is that a lot of us, a lot of people need counseling. Marriage people, a lot of us need counseling. But so many of us are full of ourselves. So we say that, as for me, I don't need counseling. You have been married for five years, 10 years. You have never gone for counseling before. There is a lot of tension in you. That is what we are talking about, that most marriages have lots of conflict. So when we have, for example, such expose or such talks, we begin to see that these things are not right. And when the woman hears it, she will begin to see that, oh, so my driving my, my husband crazy is not just something that is normal, but it is ungodly to do that. And if a man also drives his wife always driving her and you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this please relax small if you continue to do that the woman or the man will do it out of to out of just pleasing you it will not be as a result of their own volition and that is not right they cannot be held responsible after that if you force them to do it thank you peter thank you peter <laughs> Yeah, Father, I'm back. Hello, Father. I've lost the, I have yes, lost I'm, the questions I'm, that came up. Yeah. So, yes, yes, I'm back. There's a, I know in the Kali Church, I'm a Kali. Saint Anna Jueke, Teshi. I know the Kali marriage. I'm following is it you. is it right? Is it right that if you and your partner are working together, you have an institution or you have a company that you run together? Is it right that at a certain point, your wife will demand that, let's share the property. Let's share the property among ourselves. Is it right the wife to, uh, uh, to ask of that? Okay. This question presupposes a lot of information that I am not privy to. So if it is only based on what you have said, then I will only be able to answer. But sometimes it depends on what has happened before the wife is asking or before the husband is asking. I do not know what has happened. Father, you understand? One, one, However, one, I am I just basing... I, I'm, excuse me, one, one I'm just basic basing... Thing, I'm basing it... Father, I excuse me, one basic thing is that the woman that they give a birth and she have a leukemia, and then she knows that definitely she is going to die. And she doesn't have any chat with the man. And they were doing business together. What I'm saying now is my own brother, they have married in the Kali church. And the woman was demanding that. And the woman sent the husband to the courts. 
Hello. Yeah, father. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Because you see, let, let's not be specific here. This is a general teaching that goes very far. And I would love that if you would get me personally, we can talk like, but since okay. we these are, it will not be prudent for us to discuss direct issues here. We are just being general. And when we are being specific, I would be privy to the pros and cons and all the details of the situation and I'll be able to answer them. But here we are dealing in the generic. And so we wouldn't want to be specific to a particular scenario or persons. I think we'll have to give people their privacy, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. So I think you can contact me afterwards and then we can get it, we can follow, it can take it up, yes. Okay. Please, Father, how do, I, how do you manage a woman who like talking about her relationship with a friend who is interested in her husband. Wow, okay. Does she know that the, the woman is interested in her husband? And is it the husband who is asking the question? If it is the husband, you see, in my, in, I just mentioned that men are afraid of the truth. So if it is the husband who is speaking, then you must be clear to the woman that, hey, mommy, don't do this because I am, uh, this can, uh, I am getting into trouble here. So open up and tell the woman. And you too, the woman, if your husband is going to be blunt and tell you something, don't go and jump onto the other person like you are a lioness. No, be mature in some of these things. A lot of times, people have refused to talk because when they talk, the way the other partner reacted, they have quelled into their shells. However, that is not a solution. That is not the solution because we are marrying and we are going to continue. So I do not encourage you to, to, to coil into your shell. However, we must solve the problem. We must talk about it. I think that this is where friendship in marriage is very, very important because so many of us, we are not talking. You only talk about the children. You only talk about money. You only talk about the project. You only talk about the car, but you don't talk about yourself. So you are afraid of each other, and that is what will happen. So you, you, you will not be able to warn each other. Even if you are warning somebody, the person will tell you you are jealous, or you are afraid, or you are something like that. But if there is a true relationship, yes, then you need to be able to inform your partner that where the person you are talking to, you problem can come. And if your husband or your wife is telling you that, my, my, I don't like the way you talk with this your brother or with this your sister. Please give your partner the benefit of the doubt. Because most times when they are saying things like that, it is because of what they know or what they feel. However, there are some of us who blow alarm when there is not even any smoke. So that is also there. Another person is asking a question. Can there be a relationship without conflict? Or is it possible after several postmarital counseling? As I said in my earlier, there is nothing like conflict-free uh, marriage. Conflict is part of us. Conflict is part of us. It is a difference in opinion that results in an emotional uh, instability, resulting in what? In negative actions of if emotional uh, actions like fear and anger result in negative actions. So by all means, there is going to be conflict in every marriage. Another person is asking, my husband doesn't like counseling. How do I get him interested in it? Remember I said that one of the, one of the things, women, you have the war room, you have the powerhouse. Take him to prayer. Some animal ready. By the way, men, why are you afraid of counseling? Is it because of what you know in your cupboard? Many men are afraid of counseling because they know that when they get there, they will receive a lot of punches. I'm just joking. But it is true. There will be lots of punches in counseling. But a lot of us don't want it. So they prefer to hide. 
You remember one of the basic mistakes of men is that they hide away. So that is the reason why. So some of these talks like that, <clears throat> if you get your husband to be listening to such talks like that, there are so many also abound when they speak like that. That's why I want that men and women, you should go to church together and if possible, sit together so that when you are married, you listen to some of these things together. But you find that there are people who are married. They don't go to church together. Maybe they don't even go to the same church. If they go to the same church, they don't go together. If they go together, they don't sit together. If they sit together, they don't talk. If they, they are fighting, oh, why? So please, these are recipes for conflict. <clears throat> we must watch that. Hello, Father. How do I manage a careless husband? How do I manage a careless husband? I think I have said the first thing, pray. The first thing is pray. First of all, you need to ask yourself, you know, I always say that if you ask questions like, like that, it puts, it presupposes that you are not careless. All of us, the problem, we are all like that. Maybe it everybody. So you have to let your husband know that, yes, we are all careless. But you see, we can do it better that way. Let your partner feel that you are not superhuman. And once you are not superhuman, you are able to win his or her confidence and we are able to do it. But when it always becomes, my wife does this, my husband is always like that, then the other partner also uh, uh, tries to defend himself or herself. And because of that, he will say, I won't go to the counseling because if I go there, they, they, you have already concluded that I will take you to father. And when we get to father, you will see. So when we get to father and father begins to talk, ah, then they begin to say that, yes, father is siding the woman. Father is siding the man. Then father is in trouble. So the way you talk in the marriage will also prejudice the counseling session. But what is necessary is that all marriages, at least during your wedding uh, anniversary, try and have a little bit of counseling. It will help you. A, 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 a life worth, a, a, an unexamined life is not worth living. Any life that you don't examine is not worth living. So if you don't go for counseling, then you are causing financial, emotional, spiritual uh, 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 losses to your marriage. Okay, another person is asking. Thank you, oh, it's not asking. Somebody is saying that, Father, thank you for your words, and thank you too. Another person is saying that, thank you, uh, he's listening. Oh dear, I think our husband is listening, so he's very near. You husband, God bless you. God bless you for, for making time to be also, to be with your wife. I think it's about time for you to hug her and tell her that, wow, you see, after all, we are not that bad. We are doing well. We are doing well. You see, sometimes you must find a way of making a joke out of certain things and then you are able to confront the situation. If you are too serious, you find out that you are not able to deal with that. Is there any other person on the line so that we'll be ending? Is there any other person? Is there any question, please? Conflict. Next week, we'll be looking, continuing on this thing, conflict in marriage. I see somebody coming up. Is there anybody? Okay, please talk, Trisila. Mama Trisila, talk. Yes, my father and father. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Father, mm -hmm. I want to find out, maybe you, you, you see your husband cheating on you. When he comes home, do you have to be annoyed with him or something? Or you have to calm down and then maybe find out certain things from me? Thank you very much, Mama. In Akan, they say that yenjina inkrani mu entutu inkrani, meaning that you do not act in anger. You do not stand in the midst of the thick problem to be able to do it. And maybe you may not be the person even to deal with it. You understand? It's just like a doctor healing himself. Sometimes, depending on it, it depends on the level of what you are talking about or what you also saw. But most often, you need to calm yourself down so that you can approach it because the purpose of the talking about it is not merely to win. 
It is to solve the problem. Many times, most of us are only interested in winning or catching him or bringing him down or head down. If that is your reason, you see that you all, all that you are interested in is that I have won, mature. Now I hear them. That is not what we are interested in, in conflict resolution. In conflict resolution, we are interested in solving the problem. And to solve the problem, you must be, you must be level-headed and you must get the person in such a way that you are able to solve the problem. So sometimes in resolving the problem, we make it worse. We make it worse. And then in account, we say that now So you approach him in a negative way, and he also responds in a negative way. And then the real problem will be lying down, and then you will be fighting about the ancillary problem, how you did it. It's not about how you did it, but what you have done. Let's look at it. And then you 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 talk in love. You see, when you are able, you know, when the prophet Nathan saw that David has sinned. He used wisdom to approach David. He knew that if he approaches David in a way that is confronting, David is a king. He would, he, would, he, would, he would even kill him. So what did he do? He used a story. He told him a parable. And when David finished, he said that you are the one. And when David realized that David went on his knees and he cried. You see, sometimes when our partners do cause do something that is evil or sinful the way you treat your husband or your partner it will make your partner never do it again because you because of the way you treated them they, they, you treated them with love and respect so there is a time for anger but the anger must be executed in a godly manner that is what we should do thank you mama Thank you, Father. And my last one is a contribution. As you have said, our men need respect. When they see that we respect them, everything that you do, always they love you. So we must have patience and respect them. They will love you forever. There will not be any conflict. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Wow. I'm so, I'm so happy about Mama's contribution. <laughs> You know why? The reason why I'm happy is that she, as a woman, is speaking not to defend women. And I am expecting that when the men are also asking the question, they will also be able to defend the women. And that will show maturity for all of us. Mama, thank you very much for defending the men, that the men need to be what? Respected. I wish that the men will also come up and try to defend how women should be treated. And you see that it will be a balance like that. Not that men are defending their position. Women are defending their position. Conflict will kill us like that. Thank you very much. I shall take the last question. I shall take the last question that is coming. I don't know if there's anybody on the line. But one that has come in is that so long as we live, God, so long as we leave God uh, and the Holy Spirit out of the marriage, we will behave like Adam and Eve. This is a solid point for which I would want to end today's session. It says that so long as you leave God and the Holy Spirit out of your marriage, your marriage will become like Adam and Eve. We, it, we, it couldn't have been said better. It has just been said so proper. God bless us and we shall bow our heads and get ready for and we shall pray. This, uh, next week, I would like to be going through these points that I am going through, but I am going down for us to be able to look at our prayer. My dear brothers and sisters, thank you all for the time that we have spent together and we would love to pray again the prayer that we use to begin because all of us have the problem of conflict in our lives. 